This is Vader Reviews. We are honored that you would join us for my non-spoiler review of Star Wars The Rise of Skywalker. I will make a spoiler review after the first of the year, and I am also considering doing some breakdowns of certain scenes showing how with just a few changes we could have actually gotten something pretty wizard in this film. Let me know in the comments below if you would be interested in seeing those what if videos. I will also return to reviewing episodes of The Mandalorian because Baby Yoda is the bee's knees here on the interwebs lately. Before we begin, I would like to give a huge thank you to Snow Trooper Captain TK144 Noah Dingley for helping us cross the 1000 subscriber mark last weekend. And thank you to all my faithful soldiers of the Empire who shared the teaser for our upcoming Star Wars fan film, Fallen Jedi. I would love to see reaction videos to the teaser, and if you haven't seen it yet, a link is in the description of this video. And if you would like to do your part for the Empire, be sure to share this trailer to your favorite YouTubers who cover Star Wars and help spread the word about our film. The Empire thanks you for your service. So, is the Force with this film, or did it choke on its aspirations? Let's find out. After the worst written text crawl in Star Wars history, we learn Ray, Finn, and Poe have been trucking around the galaxy being space buddies. Also, Ray has finally been getting some Jedi training, again. Something that would have been great to see in previous films, but whatever. Kylo Ren has been ruling the galaxy and surprisingly enough, being pretty wizard for once. What gets the plot moving is the fact that my old creepy boss somehow managed to survive having a sorry wrinkly old butt chucked down the reactor core of the Death Star. To say nothing of the subsequent explosion that would have completely atomized his body and any debris, particularly the glass, that miraculously remains in the window pane in his old throne room. Now I bet you're pretty curious how he survived. Well so am I and I saw the movie. I know the dark side is a pathway to many abilities that some consider to be unnatural, but this is ridiculous. Now to his credit, the whole film feels like an apology from JJ for The Last Jedi. And while I appreciate that, bringing Palpatine back was the last nail in the coffin completely undermining my sacrifice and every victory from the prequel and original trilogy turning the legacy of our classic heroes to failure to prop up their new characters. And while these three sequel films are supposedly a continuation of the Skywalker saga, all they truly are is an uninspired corporate cash grab meant to hand all of the power, achievements, and even possessions of myself and my children to this new character just so the current story team can triumphantly proclaim like a bratty child. My character is the bestest ever. The visuals are impressive, with the exception of a few ridiculous puppet characters. While I appreciate practical effects, they should only be done if they can be done convincingly. One of these characters looks like it's from Men in Black, while the other looks like a total muppet. My apologies if this seems more unfocused than my typical reviews, but I will have my usual facts and information in my spoiler review. I will honestly say, I didn't hate this movie as much as I hated The Last Jedi. I can't discuss the plot without getting into spoilers, but watching this film, it feels like they tried to fit a trilogy's worth of information into one movie. Since Ryan Johnson completely derailed the franchise, J.J. had to pretty much hit the reset button and start over. They had to cover so much story in such a short time. Everything feels rushed, particularly the climactic battle. It feels like a TV show where they're like, Crap, we're running out of time here, we need to wrap this up. And it is unfortunate that this is how the Skywalker saga ends. Nearly every scene feels like you're only getting an abridged version. It almost feels like watching one of those movies people cut together from the cinematic clips from a video game. But all the story that takes place during gameplay isn't there, so you basically can follow what's going on. 
but it all seems a little disjointed and you miss a few important details. The sad thing is, it's almost good. Not quite, but almost. It is one of the better Star Wars films from this new era, and it has some legitimately great parts that show what this new trilogy as a whole could have been. Seeing Finn, Poe and Rey together as a team, you can't help but think, if we could have gotten this from all three films, perhaps these emotional beats they were trying to achieve in this final chapter would have actually meant something. But sadly, it is hollow and unearned, kind of like Rey's journey to become the most wizard Jedi of all time. Did you ever hear the tragedy of George Lucas the Wise? I thought not. It's not a story Disney would tell you. It's a Star Wars legend. And the real tragedy here is that they didn't just waste the potential of these classic characters, they wasted everyone. Because for the first time, these new characters were engaging and interesting in this film. Even Kylo. I know I've given him a lot of crap over the years on this channel, but in this film, he finally had some presence. He was powerful, and I could take him seriously for once. They finally got him right this time around. But just like how we finally got our heroes together, and Rey got some training, it was just too little too late. All of the actors did the best with what they were given, and there were even a couple of genuine moments of true emotion that I will discuss in my spoiler review. On the positive side, I didn't hate this film like I thought I was going to. The effects are great, the performances are well crafted. John Williams' score is amazing as usual, particularly when we hear some of the classic Star Wars themes again. There is an adventure slash questing element to the story that I truly enjoyed. We actually get some good lightsaber duels in the film, and I even found some of the plot threads and force powers intriguing. But if you had to sum up what this new trilogy is on a whole, it's just missed opportunities at every turn. It also felt like they knew what fans wanted to see, and just sort of teased us with part of it, but they never really gave us everything. Which is a shame, since this was our last chance to see certain places, events, or characters audiences have loved for years. Again, I know this is vague and very different from my usual reviews. I will have a more in-depth take on this film in my spoiler review, so in place of my typical rating system, I will merely say, if you already hate the sequel trilogy, there is not enough in this film to make the sequels acceptable for you. Or if you're in the I don't want to give them my money camp, it's not amazing enough to break your resolve and make you say, Gee whiz, I gotta go see it now. I will also give warning to anyone with photosensitive epilepsy. Large sequences of this film take place during a lightning storm, so there are a lot of flashing bright lights that could make trouble for you. And parents with small children, you will want to preview this film before you let them see it. There are certain images, particularly during the opening and finale of the film, that would be frightening and grotesque for young ones. So protect their little eyes and make sure it won't be too much for them. In the end, while The Rise of Skywalker is one of the better modern Star Wars films, full of imaginative visuals and some pretty wizard battle scenes, I can't help but consider the sequel trilogy to be nothing more than expensive fan fiction. Episodes 1 through 6 had a singular vision, George Lucas crafted a complex mythology filled with creatures and characters that enthralled audiences the world over, changing the face of cinema and pop culture forever with his imagination and pioneering spirit of innovation. He wrote his version of 7, 8, and 9 to complete his groundbreaking saga. Disney, however, threw those stories away and wrote their own, supplanting all of his characters and their achievements. So to me and many others I'm sure, these new films are sort of just their own thing floating around in the ether, and the true ending of the Skywalker Saga is a totally wizard Ewok dance party on the forest moon of Endor. Yes sir, 
Just thinking about it makes me feel all warm and toasty inside. From all of us here at Vader Reviews, we would like to wish you and your families a safe and Merry Christmas. For weekly film reviews and updates on our fan film, subscribe and hit that bell for notifications and follow me on Twitter at Vader Reviews. If you would like to support what we're doing here, a link to our PayPal is in the description of this video. And also drop us a like on Facebook if you're still on that old fogey platform. And always remember, you don't know the power of the dark side.